Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you for the gospel armor. We thank you for this wonderful, glorious, impossible to say thank you enough for this gift of salvation. Transform us, we pray. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So we're in Hebrews, and we're in Ephesians 6. We're talking about the gospel armor. Uh, we'll just review the steps of that, and then we'll talk about salvation. Amen. Right. Yeah, we're uh, <clears throat> really drilling down hard on uh, Ephesians 6 here. <laughs> Uh, verses 11 and 12, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's armors so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. It's quite a handful. Verse 13, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness, that's the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, verse 15, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, the gospel, so that you'll be fully prepared. Above all, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation so when we talk about salvation there's at least three different parts to it and some people say seven but um one of them is called justify or justification you want to talk about that for a second rich yeah romans 4 25 uh who was delivered up for our trans uh, trespasses and raised for our justification. So part of Jesus' resurrection uh, was for our justification. Amen. Uh, yeah, he opened the door to resurrection. Opening the door to resurrection says, in effect, for us, we we must be justified to in order to be able to walk through that door. So uh, that's a uh, uh, part and parcel with uh resurrection it's a it's a word that we don't i don't know if we use it this way in english much it's it's a legal term so lord jesus come into my heart forgive my sins at that moment my sin life has been expunged meaning it doesn't show up uh on the court record and i am justified and and the idiom for that is sometimes just as if i had never sinned um, that's a little little rough, but not terrible. He's delivered for our transgression, and he was raised for our justification. So the first part of salvation, well, death, resurrection, and then our receiving that makes us justified before God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? Yeah, justification doesn't really mean you're innocent. <laughs> but right. you're treated as you're treated as if you are that's right i mean you had you know you, you've confessed your sins so you yourself admit uh your guilt but yeah. uh, the fact that you've confessed them brought them out in the open brought them into the light god takes the step to say uh okay as far as i'm concerned they are uh covered uh they are um they are not an issue of judgment any longer. Um, Amen. So that, that's justification. First Thessalonians 5.23. Now may God, 
the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So sanctification is working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Sanctification is becoming separate from the world. Sanctification is living out the new you um, on a daily basis and for the rest of your life. So no one's, we're justified in the sense that our sins expunged, but there's still a whole lot of humanness in, here, in us that needs to be transformed so we become a little less like us and a little more like Jesus. Amen. Yeah, we, uh, we still carry around this uh, corrupt flesh, uh, obviously. Um, the process does not eliminate that. So uh, with that, there is baggage. And um, so, yes, we take on this new dimension of spirituality, uh, which transcends the old, but does not uh, completely eliminate it. Though it says all things have become new, uh, what you have is a new mixture of sanctified and um, uh, corrupt uh, old flesh. Uh, that's just the reality of it. Some people are more trans transformed than others. Some people experience a very complete um, transformation and um, blessed indeed, you know. Uh, other people struggle with uh, lingering sins and um, want to be rid of them, but uh, habitual uh, issues that uh, uh, may involve drinking or any number of things um, may linger. Yeah. Uh, and as long as you're dealing with them in earnest, uh, God is uh, working with you. I mean, he's, he's, yeah. you know, the relationship is, is still considered on the up and up because you have been justified. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and the fact is too that, uh, you know, if, if, if once you've, made a sincere uh, declaration of the Lord's uh, being the Lord and having priority and uh, recognizing the love that he's extended to us. He created us and, and he provided salvation for us by his own, by his own flesh. Um, if they, once that's fully embraced, you've made a relationship that is enduring and it will endure uh even uh repetitive sins uh as long as your orientation to him remains uh worth him in priority and, and recognizing his agape and and uh, working uh, living toward that trying to work toward that life of agape yourself then uh the lord is uh, uh, uh working with us um, if you happen to die, I believe now this is where you and I pastor might differ a little bit, but I believe that even if you die in a state of, um, call it uh, backsliding, um, there is the Bema seat and the Bema seat of judgment is primary is for all believers, all for, who are saved. If they're believers, they're saved. Um, if they, uh, you know, if they happen to be uh, dying in a state of grace, then they can look forward to rewards. If they if they die uh, in a state of being backslidden, they'll lose those rewards, or at least some of them. Uh, they won't have the fullness of blessing that people who die in, in um, uh, grace would have. Um, but they won't. Uh, if they're at that beam of seat, they're saved. Yes. And we have to say that the Lord Jesus loves our loves the people that are dying more than we do. Um, <laughs> he does have standards, but he loves them, and that's a good thing. Right. Okay, so we've got justification, sanctification, and then we get to... Uh, let's see, our citizenship of, of Philippians 312, uh, 320. Our citizenship is in heaven once we have made this uh, confession of faith uh, and recognize um, 
what the uh, what the totality of God's plan is. Not that we <laughs> know every detail of it, but that we see the grand perspective uh, of salvation, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body. So there's a transformation coming by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Okay, so justification, Jesus, forgive my sin, it's expunged. Sanctification, Lord Jesus, let me be more like you and less like me. And then, then in glory, we have a glorious new beginning. So we've got justification, sanctification, and glorification in these three verses we just talked about. How amazing right. that is. Yeah. And really, the only thing that upsets the plan is um, um, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. That's right. And, but, and, uh, and we can freely choose to serve Jesus or not, but um, please serve Jesus. It's so much better than any other choice. Yeah, amen. Okay, so... And, and, that blasphemy and then, does not come as an accident. It's nothing you're going to stumble into accidentally either. Right. I mean, it would it's just take active, a very concerted effort. Aggressive denial of Jesus and the Holy Spirit um, to the to the ulti ultimate end. Right. Okay. So, right. what happens at salvation? Well, let's talk about a few of those things. Yeah. Well, this is, at salvation. Um, there is the uh, the awakening, if you will, not to <laughs> get too close to the modern. <laughs> terminology that we are thrown away thrown around uh today but there is a um an enlightenment that occurs the light of christ comes on and reveals uh the plan of god the overall plan of god which is what he started out with is his, his intention from the beginning of creation was to develop a family of believers um and uh the realization that um that family uh is the result of people willfully electing to be part of it they want to be part of it that's why he's given them free will but in giving them free will uh it's risky business from his point of view in that uh that opens the door to the potential for sin and surely in time uh we we cross certain certain lines there that uh are sinful so to remedy that, of course, uh, the Lord uh, gave his own life as an act of love to keep the uh, relation um, and uh, we think in terms of the process. But to all who did receive even his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's that again, it's that family structure that God had in mind from the beginning. He will not be thwarted. Right. So, so when you say yes to Jesus, you become a child of God. What an incredible sentence that is. How about the next slide? Okay. Nine, the Christian's bar of soap, <laughs> as is sometimes referred to. If we confess our sins, spiritual soap, that is. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So at the moment of salvation... Our sins are forgiven, and we are cleansed from unrighteousness. Amazing uh, combinations of things. We become a child of God. We become forgiven. Uh, we are cleansed from our unrighteousness. Uh, that's at the moment of salvation. It's an amazing um, uh, part of justification. Right. It's an amazing paradigm shift. Uh, yeah. John 10.10, 10. the thief comes only to kill and uh, steal, kill, and destroy. 
I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Amen. So okay. that we have new life and it's an abundant life. It's not it's so opposite of what the devil would want. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But we have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Yep. From Eros to Agape, yeah. These are, this is borrowing on the uh, Greek um, vernacular for love. Uh, the Greeks uh, have uh, four primary definitions of love. Eros, Storge, Phileo, and Agape. And we are born into a natural state of Eros, which really means self-centeredness. It's a uh, self-centered love, which we have to have to an extent in order to survive. Uh, after all, who's going to look after number one? It's just a question of how, how we do it and uh, to what extent do we dwell on it? Some people are locked into that perspective, that self-perspective uh, um, permanently. Uh, Jesus offers an entirely different category of love. Um, something that exceeds even, even brotherly love, which is a, a phileo type of relationship um, where you do for me and I'll do for you. And we, we both live to support the relationship. Jesus goes beyond that to agape love, um, which is essentially the inverse or, or, of uh, arrows. In other words, it's a, a love of other, other people simply because you value them, simply because you see in them a worth uh, that they are, for instance, a, a, a creation of God, that they are, um, as a creation of God, they essentially have a value that, uh, that we uh, orient toward, that we choose then to support, that we uh, will give of ourselves that we will expend ourselves even unto death as Jesus did. I mean, he's the extreme example. Um, uh, even death, even death on a Roman cross uh, yes. for the sake of uh, the beloved. Um, somebody had to pay sin, that sin debt for God to have, for men to have a restored relationship with uh, the Lord. And Jesus took it upon himself to get that paid. And that's an a, a act of agape, purely of his volition. Um, whether or not we respond, that's the big question. And how we respond um, has everything to uh, do with our um, uh, the new life that he has offered us. Um, do we choose to walk in it or not? Do we choose to live an agape lifestyle as he, he had? Uh, that's uh, that's what he's looking for. Um, above all, appreciation of what he has done um, to uh, to fully grasp just how uh, how important this whole sin issue is and what he was willing to do to remedy it, that we might have a right relationship with God. Um, this is all what happens from salvation, moving from a state of arrows, that self-centeredness, to a state of agape and loving uh, ex, um, expenditurely, <laughs> mm -hmm. expending one's life to, uh, to love. As Jesus said, just to back off on that just a bit, um, he who finds his own life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's a... Uh, that's a reflection on the transformation from Eros to Agape. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, okay? Creation of the old and the new, primarily the new is what counts, the new life uh, in the spirit. The old has passed away, um, but it has become a blend. It's passed away in the sense for most people We'd say it's a blend of the old, the old flesh, which of course does not disappear at uh, salvation, um, but um, is blended with a new life 
of a transcendental uh, dimension that the natural life does not have. And that is the newness of the new creature. That yes, we still have the, uh, the uh, old flesh, uh, but uh, much of it, hopefully, <laughs> is uh, transformed and has become aware of its waywardness um, uh, because of its transcendent perspective that it takes on. It can see uh, where the old life uh, has, um, has gone wayward, and, but the new life is dead on, dead on track, spe uh, um, completely properly oriented to the way of the Lord. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's the new spirit, spiritual life. Okay, so what a wonderful gift salvation is. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this helmet of salvation that we can cover our brains, but we can know that you paid the price for our sins and that we can walk with the creator of the universe in a loving relationship. What a great gift you are, oh Lord. Transform me so I can be what you would have me to be in Christ's name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you so much for, for this gift of salvation, gift of life, and the gift of redeemed life uh, that we may have a right relationship with you. Uh, and uh, help us grow our appreciation for what you've done um, that we may ever advance uh, to your praise and glory in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Have a blessed day, amen. all. Bye.